The challenge of imitating natural living movement is one that humans have been trying to tackle for thousands of years. Whether it's marionettes, Zoltar, the fortune teller, or those creepy dog robots, it's always impressive to see a convincing imitation of a living thing. And that's why automatons were really popular among wealthy society in the late 20th century. A high quality automaton was a display of superior craftsmanship, mechanical knowledge, and it was great at parties. The most lavish automatons were often decked out with jewels or made of gold and silver and other precious metals. Today, we're going to look at some of the most impressive ones that we could find, but first, how about a little history lesson? Though we don't know of any surviving automatons from before the 1600s or so, there are many accounts that mention automaton-like creations, or at least the designs for them, from as far back as the ancient Greeks. A friend of Plato's is said to have built a wooden dove that flew with the power of steam or maybe even compressed air. A few centuries later, there was Greco-Egyptian engineer and mathematician Heron of Alexandria who invented a vending machine, an organ powered by wind, and steam-driven engines. What I love about some of the automatons on this list is that they don't really exist to serve any kind of function other than for decoration or just showing off. Don't act like you're not impressed. One of the most impressive on our list is the silver swan from the 1770s. This big bird, built by James Cox, is life-sized, 30 pounds of sterling silver, and features engraved feathers and other incredible minute details. An intricate set of rings allows for realistic movement of the head and neck, making it look like it's preening its feathers before it reaches down into the pond on which it rests. The movement of water is simulated by rotating glass rods, dotted with moving silver fish. The swan then brings its head up with a fish in its mouth and appears to swallow it. Oh, and of course, it plays music the entire time. It used to come with a crystal stand that simulated falling water and a tall glass dome that included a three-foot sun that would rise and set while the swan did its thing, making the whole structure about 18 feet tall. Huge. This all may look a bit clunky and dated to us now, but at the time, imagine it must have been jaw-dropping. On the smaller end of the automaton scale, we have the Ethiopian caterpillar. It was made about 200 years ago, but it still runs perfectly. Not as elegant as the swan, but it does sport a few colorful gems and gold rings. It's only about 7 centimeters long, but it's covered with seed pearls, rubies, and emeralds. A seed pearl is a very small natural pearl. The early benchmark for being called a seed pearl was that it had to weigh less than a quarter of a grain, and a grain is equal to about a quarter of a carat. Nowadays, seed pearls tend to be accidental byproducts of pearl farmers attempting to grow larger pearls. But if you buy antique jewelry with seed pearls in it, you can be almost certain that they are natural. All of those bright stones glint and glisten as the caterpillar wriggles its way across the table, making it look for all the world like a real silkworm. It was displayed in 1811 alongside the creator's other works, like the Egyptian lizard and the Siberian mouse. Sticking with our animal theme, we have perhaps the most elaborate one on our list, the Rothschild mechanical elephant. For a family that's famous for their extravagant collections, this has got to be among the most impressive. Well, aside from their cute little house. Anyways, this elephant has to be seen to be believed. It's made of gilt bronze and is covered in imitation gems, mother of pearl, and glass paste. Glass paste is a common imitator gem and is made from fine glass powder, some kind of colorant, and a binding agent. When you wind it up, the tail swishes, the trunk twists, its ears flap, and its eyes scan back and forth in its head, making it eerily lifelike. Ugh, can you say uncanny valley? Not only that, but the characters surrounding the elephant spin in place, as well as the turbaned man riding atop the elephant. And like with the swan, a repeating melody is played on chimes during the entire performance. Now, we've discussed Fabergé eggs on the channel before, but we would be remiss to not shout them out in this video as well. There are a ton of egg automatons to choose from, but we picked some of our favorites. While they're fresh on the mind, here's another elephant. This egg itself is made of jadeite, rose-cut diamonds, silver, and satin. And on the inside, a cute little elephant. Made in 1892, this was the first automaton made by Fabergé. It was carved out of ivory, had a little golden tower on its back, which was adorned with rose-cut diamonds. Its sides are decorated with gold and precious stones. Unsurprisingly, most of the other Fabergé automatons are birds. I mean, after all, they come out of eggs. What are you expecting? This swan, however, comes out of its egg in style. It sits in a cute little basket inside the egg, and once it's wound up, 
It rolls forward slowly, raising its head and spreading the individual feathers in its wing, which is an engineering marvel in something that is that small. It was designed after the silver swan we mentioned earlier. Fabergé was likely inspired after seeing it in person at the 1867 World's Fair in Paris, and who wouldn't be? Another automaton inspired by James Cox's creation is this little peacock. Inside the rock crystal egg sits a four inch peacock in a tiny little tree made of gold with precious gemstone flowers. When you wind up this bird, it struts around admiring itself and it spreads its tail open and shut. Classic peacock move. I am a peacock, you gotta let me fly! Many automatons, like I mentioned earlier, are either just for decoration or serve some basic function, like as a timepiece. But these final ones we're gonna look at serve a most noble purpose indeed. They're for partying. The wealthy love to throw parties, especially when there's a new toy to show off. And what's better than a toy that gets the party going? Enter the triumph of Bacchus. Bacchus is the Roman god of wine and fertility, an apt subject for an alcoholic automaton. Wind it up and this ornate gold carriage plays a melody as it rolls around on the table. Bacchus and his satyrs seem to eye the party watchfully and when the carriage stops, the person in front of it has to remove the goat's head and take a drink. It's a pretty simple game that is played with other automata, like the Diana and Stag. This one is made of gold and decorated with jewels and it would also roll around on the table, stopping in front of a guest. The guest would then remove the horse and drain it of its blood. I mean, why? Automatons like these were used by powerful families like the Habsburgs as gifts to ease tense relationships with other groups like the Ottomans. Because if there's one thing we can all get behind, it's a new way to party. That's all we've got time for today, guys. Which automaton was your favorite? Let us know down in the comments, and of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.